Madam Turefic, thank you very much for doing that. It's a pleasure and an honor for us to talk to you. Uh, what did it mean for you to be recognized with the Catalonia International Award? Oh, it is it is a, a special honor for me. Uh, I already knew this uh, Catalonia International Award because one of my um, colleagues, also an oncologist, uh, um, uh, Josef Baselga, had been in the past acknowledged with uh, it. So uh, this was not the first time I heard about it, obviously. And uh, it's um, it's a special honor that I'm among all those um, uh, awardees. Um, and uh, I feel very honored and hum humbled. Yeah, as you know, uh, in the 2020 edition, three more women were awarded uh, as a recognition of their contributions in the fight against pandemics. What's the significance for you to be, of being recognized along with uh, other women? Uh, it, uh, it is wonderful to be recognized with other strong and brilliant women, uh, with um, these uh, sisters, not sisters in crime, but sisters in the service of, uh, uh, of a greater cause. Uh, so I, I, that again is a special honor, and um, uh, I think this will also help further to highlight how important it is uh, to, to mobilize women and also girls as role models for uh, activities which are around science and technology, meaning for the STEM or STEM um, uh, disciplines. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, almost uh, two years ago, you changed your line of work to find the vaccine against COVID-19 with Pfizer. You and your team achieved that only eight months after the WHO declared the pandemic. How do you recall those months? It was a roller coaster ride. I have to say, uh, it was anyway not an easy time for, for us as a global community. And on top of it, uh, uh, we at BioNTech, our team, uh, also felt the moral obligation uh, to contribute and to embark uh, into uh, this journey, which we called Project Lightspeed, which already tells you uh, the name itself. Uh, that um, we uh, had to move fast. We had tens of decisions per day, uh, which uh, would um, uh, 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 contribute to whether the project would be su successful or not. And for quite a long time, because we were on new territory, we were not sure whether we would hit the target at the end of the day. So it was a very exciting and 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 consuming time as well. But we, very tired. we are very happy that we were blessed with success. Um, Pfizer and, and uh, BioNTech did a new scientific approach to the COVID-19 vaccine that involves injecting part of the virogenetic code in, in order to train the immune system. Is that approach uh, the most important part of your work? Uh, this yes, the, the approach is an important part of our uh, our work uh, that we use mRNA, a new technology uh, which has not uh, been used before in an approved vaccine or in any approved drug. So in principle, uh, uh, the, 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 the general approach of vaccines is that you present one part of the virus uh, or uh, the entire virus to the immune system. And we did exactly that. So that was not different from other vaccines. But what uh, mRNA allowed us to do was that uh, we did not need to construct uh, this virus part, we just delivered uh, the blueprint, the, 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 the manual, how to um, generate this virus part, the spike protein, to the human body and the cells of the human body 
generate then this um, uh, 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 protein, which is like um, uh, a wanted poster for the immune system. And because this is this uh, doing this with MR with mRNA allows you to be faster to communicate better with the body and to ensure higher precision. This uh, was an important piece for the success of our project Lightspeed. Mm -hmm. uh, to what extent can we be sure that the COVID vaccines your team and, and you produced will not cause any harm or side effect uh, to those who were injected with them? So, um, you know, we uh, can build on, on, um, on uh, established uh, ways how in drug and vac vaccine development, we as a scientific and regulatory community is assess safety. And uh, there are in principle two pillars. One pillar is what science tells us in terms of understanding the mechanism. And the mechanism of an mRNA vaccine is such that uh, safety risks which come late are not to be expected because you know the mRNA is um, uh, enters the body. Uh, it uh, builds the spike protein. The spike protein is recognized by the immune system. The immune system builds an immune response precisely against the uh, spike protein, and the mRNA disappears within a couple of days. So these mechanistics, which are well studied, tell us that there is no situation where long term safety issues would arise or even short term. This is one pillar. And the other pillar is the, is the clinical data. And our mRNA vaccine is um, uh, the drug which is actually best studied uh, as compared to anything in the med in med medicine, because so many um, uh, 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 people have been immunized with it, and all the safety data in clinical trials, but also in the uh, vaccination campaigns, is being collected and assessed by us as regulatory authorities and public health authorities, so that we have a good understanding what the safety profile is. And it is very, very unlikely that safety issues, which are not recognized early on, would appear sometime late because there's no mechanism by which after two, three, five years, all of, of a sudden something which you have not picked up earlier would occur. You are the, the pioneer of, of the search for the immunity against cancer. What's the current uh, state of the research uh, you conduct in this field? Um, we, uh, uh, we are uh, using our mRNA platform again uh, to develop uh, vaccines against cancer. Uh, we have uh, our cancer vaccines come in two flavors. Uh, we have highly personalized vaccines where we uh, indeed on demand and tailor made uh, generate vaccines for each and every uh, patient uh, who, which are unique. And then we have approaches where we have off the shelf uh, mRNA cancer vaccines, which um, uh, fit to a certain tumor type. And both these approaches have reached um, uh, what we call phase two clinical trials, the second phase of in total three phases of clinical trials. This is how um, drugs are developed. And what we are testing in phase two is that we compare against the standard of care uh, these patients would normally get. And um, the task here is to show in so-called randomized trials that our vaccine is better when uh, as compared to whatever patients with a specific cancer type would get nowadays. If we can show that this works out and we uh, uh, add a benefit uh, and we will know this uh, within the next um, one to two years, uh, then we can better predict 
how fast we could be close to market with our vaccines. So we are in, we are in the in the path of um, the classic treatments of chemotherapy and radiotherapy we, uh, will be replaced. Exactly. So that that is uh, that is um, uh, the development path. One has to compare against uh, the standard treatment and the standard treatment are uh, depending on the tumor type either chemotherapy uh, or, uh, or um, antibodies targeted therapies or so-called checkpoint inhibitors which are also widely used and one has to show that uh, the vaccine works better and it's about replacing or adding on top of those treatments so we are on the uh, right track to cancer to become a uh, chronic illness. That's that's exactly uh, the objective to make cancer a disease which is chronic and which uh, allows the patients to have a life of normal quality. That's one of the main uh, work streams. Another work stream is that we not only work in advanced cancers, uh, uh, we are very interested in using our vaccines in patients who get surgery and seem to be tumor free, but uh, the cancer comes back because surgery could not um, uh, delete all the tumor cells. Uh, this is, for example, the case in colorectal cancer, where if you catch the disease early, uh, you, uh, patients don't have metastasis and there is a surgery and patients appear tumor free. However, uh, 40 to 50 percent of these patients will relapse and will at the end of the day succumb to their disease. And what uh, we are doing is to develop cancer vaccines, which are used directly after surgery in order to um, uh, enable the immune system to uh, clean up the residual dormant uh, and, and uh, uh, hidden cells so that this would be, uh, here the objective would be to have a cure of cancer in these early stages of disease. Awesome to see. Thank you very much for your answers. Uh, I'm from our newspaper in, in Barcelona, Catalonia. Thank you for the, the research and work are, uh, you are doing, not only in, in coronavirus field, but in, especially in cancer. Thank you very much for this very pleasant chat. Thank you.